I played in this gym for eight years in high school and college, and even perhaps even more a family thing because my dad went to Loyal Academy from 1924 to 1928, and I think it was 23 or 24 when this building opened. Obviously somewhat intimate surroundings uh, up here at Loyola, and probably at that time it would be filled with, say, 95 to 99 percent of our fans and our students. And my recollection is that I generally knew where my friends were seated, where my family was seated, so I knew the sections where these guys would be or where my family would be. So it was very familiar, everybody's face was familiar to me. So that made it a lot easier to play in. You'd have to be here by 5, 5.15 to get, just to get in. It's such an intimate set setting in here, so you knew where your friends were sitting, so, um, and your parents and anyone else who came to the game. And I always remember uh, one of my best memories is my dad always sitting in the same spot in the bleachers because uh, there are no seats here in alumni. And um, he would sit in the same spot. And I remember during plays or anything good that happened in the game, I could always just look at him right in the eye and smile. And I never felt that in any other gym. I would never be able to do that in any other gym except alumni because of it's intimacy in here, and that was, uh, I'll always remember that. It just was small and intimate and warm, and the energy was good. Putting on the jersey for the first time and, you know, coming out of that crowd, uh, the introduction. You think about all the history up in here, and you think all the hard practices, all those days when Sullivan woke you up in the middle of the night screaming about something that happened two days ago on the basketball court. There's so many memories as you go down the hall and you see the numbers retired uh, of all the players and now uh, even the reserve players have their number retired. I remember coming here my freshman year, um, you know, the place was typically sold out then and, and the closest I got was the top of the stairwell. So the first game I already saw the basket. In 1977-78, uh, we had a week where we played Indiana State on a Monday. We upset them with Larry Bird. And then the following Saturday, we had Georgetown here, and we also upset them. Alumni Gym, home of the Loyola University Chicago Rambler Athletic Team since 1923. Alumni Gym was designed by Paul V. Highland, who also designed several other buildings on Loyola's campus and was built by George W. Stiles Company of Chicago in 1923 for a cost of nearly $500,000. An edition of the Loyola Quarterly from 1923 described the newly designed alumni gym as a very good gymnasium, quite the equal of anything in this part of the country. It will be 212 by 90 and will house, besides a large playing floor, bowling alleys, billiard rooms, various club rooms, locker compartments, and a swimming pool. The building was partly financed by a group of 12 Loyola alumni who referred to themselves as the Bugs. The Bugs gave a dinner party on November 16th of 1923 at Chicago's Hotel LaSalle. The dinner party attracted 175 Loyola graduates and was able to raise an impressive $31,000, which was used to cover a portion of the cost of the construction. In addition, David F. Bremner, an alum and owner of the Bremner Bakery, donated $10,000 to the building. The completion of Alumni Gym began a relationship between the university, the neighborhood, and the city. Jesuit publications at the time pointed out that the gym had emerged as a civic center of the North Shore Park District and that it was becoming a factor in the life of the city. In 1923, Alumni Gym began hosting gymnastics, swimming, and dancing courses for the public. Families were encouraged to pick up membership applications at the gym office or McGuire's Drugstore, corner Loyola Avenue and Sheridan Road. On November 7, 1923, a swimming exhibition was held in the Alumni Gym pool and Olympic hopefuls Sybil Bauer, John Farley, Harold Stubby Kruger, and Johnny Weissmiller, later known to American movie audiences as Tarzan, all set world records that night, hailed by the Chicago Tribune as the first 75-foot tank in Chicago. 
the alumni gym pool gained a national reputation and was a favorite site of amateur athletic union indoor swimming, relay, and water polo championships. In December of 1923, a 600 auto parade through the streets of the neighborhood to celebrate the plan to widen Sheridan Road ended with an elaborate program in Alumni Gym that featured Chicago Mayor William Evett Deaver. In 1924, Alumni Gym hosted the Chicago Public High School Boys Basketball Championship game, featuring Lane Tech High School versus Wendell Phillips High School. The game drew more than 5,000 fans. So there was a strong high school following here too. We used to draw really very well. And it's interesting because, in, you know, it's all in context. We look at this gym now as sort of a kind of cracker box, in the, but as high school kids, we thought it was a huge arena, you know, right. because the Chicago Catholic League had gyms like St. Mel and Leo and St. Pat's that were all tiny uh, little old-fashioned gyms. And so playing here was, I think, almost kind of an advantage for us. Also in 1924, Loyola sponsored the National Interscholastic Catholic Basketball Tournament as teams representing Catholic high schools from across the nation all came to Chicago to square off an alumni gym for the coveted Cardinal Mundelein Cup. An annual event from 1924 to 1941, the tournament featured some of the top talent in the country, including a young player in the 1932 tournament named George Ireland, who would later go on to become Loyola University's head basketball coach and lead Loyola to an NCAA championship. Alumni Gym also hosted many non-athletic events for the local parishes, including the annual tradition of Mary's Hour at the beginning of the month of May, which included the living rosary of first communicants. Loyola Academy called Alumni Gym home since its founding until 1957, when the Academy moved to its current Wilmette location. Throughout the years, the gym has hosted many historic high school basketball games, as well as many future stars in the sports world. Alumni Gym also hosted many college football teams. Loyola's football field was located in what is now Loyola's West Quad, and the football locker rooms were housed in Alumni Gym. In 1930, Loyola installed lights, being one of the first college football teams to play their entire schedule at night. But a few short months later, in November of 1930, Loyola decided to drop its football program, although Loyola Academy continued to play on the field until moving to its new Wilmette location. Loyola's pool was the home to a very successful water polo program and swim team. The water polo team was consistently ranked in the national rankings throughout the years, earning many NCAA tournament appearances, while also churning out several All-Americans. Dan O'Connell was a four-time All-American and later played for the U.S. water polo team. The water polo program ended play after the 1989 season and swimming ended after the 1994 season. The gym was also constructed with an indoor track around the top of the gym, which also served as a balcony during the basketball games. In its early days, the gym hosted many track meets, and later the track was used primarily as a training facility and was named the Tom O'Hara Track in honor of 1964 Olympian, indoor mile world record holder, and Loyola track great, Tom O'Hara. Uh, I used to use the swimming pool then, and, and one of the fondest memories I have of uh, uh, Loyola Gym was uh, when it was real cold in the morning and I couldn't run outdoors, I used to run in the gym here. It was kind of hard, you know, but I'd run up the stairs and down the stairs and around the water. And then when I was injured, I used to swim in the pool. Women's basketball called Alumni Gym home from 1979 until 1996, compiling an impressive record of 156 wins and 87 losses. I always knew that alumni was special. Uh, my dad talked to me about the 63 champs. So um, I knew that winners played here. And uh, I remember the first time that I walked in and I thought, wow, I could see myself playing here because I could you know, just feel that this was a you know, winners played here and I wanted to be a part of that. Alumni Gym has been the home of Loyola's women's volleyball team since the late 70s and through the 2009 season, the Ramblers had compiled a record of 206 wins and 83 losses there. I mean, you kind of knew who was here. You know, it was small enough. It was great for our sport.
The men's volleyball team has called Alumni Gym home since its inception in 1996. Men's volleyball has been 189 and 38 through the 2010 season. Recently, Alumni Gym was named one of the top volleyball venues in the country. Through the years, the gym has played host to many volleyball All-Americans and future U.S. national team members, and has also hosted many nationally ranked opponents in epic contests, including Loyola's upset of the number one team in the nation, Penn State, in 2010. When you have 2,000 people in alumni gym, I mean, you can't hear anything. And that's, that's something that people want to play in front of. They want to be a part of that. And so it's been a great recruiting tool in, in that sense. But through it all, the gym's most storied tenant has been the Loyola University men's basketball team. Men's basketball competed in alumni from 1923 to 1996 and compiled an impressive record of 484 wins and 136 losses there before moving to its current home, the Gentile Center. It was a great gym to play in. It was, we didn't have tremendous capacity, but we used to fill it, and great tradition. It was a wonderful place to play. In fact, I played there in high school, too. We used to play Loyola Academy. I played for Fenwick, and even the All-Star game in 53 was at, uh, for the Catholic League was at Loyola. So it holds a lot of memories for me. It goes way back. Everybody, everybody talks about an alumni hall, and nobody realizes how small it was. I mean, really, uh, we had what, maybe 1,200, 1,500, 2,000 people, and it was jam-packed. You couldn't get in, that's why you had to come early. And the, and the people from the neighborhood supported us, too. So we had the neighborhood, some of us had family here, but the students were lined up an hour before the game to get in. Everything started in 1963. I mean, I think if you go back, I think our 1939 team was undefeated. Uh, uh, 1949, I remember listening on the radio as a kid. I must have been in sixth or seventh grade to the finals of the NIT where we lost a very close game to the University of San Francisco. And so there's been a part of a great tradition. I grew up, my, my dad just was a tremendous Loyola fan, so we always came to game. The gym has seen many winning basketball teams through the years, such as the 1939 second place NIT team with Hall of Fame coach Lenny Sachs and All-Americans Mike Novak and Wibbs Counts, as well as the 1949 second place NIT team led by Ed Earl and Jack Karras. Loyola basketball's most memorable season was the 1962-63 season when George Ireland's Ramblers started the year ranked third in the nation by the Associated Press. They then went on to win their first 20 games and finished the regular season with a 24-2 record. The Ramblers were undefeated in alumni gym that season, playing to regularly packed houses. They went on to march through the NCAA tournament, ending with a thrilling overtime victory over defending champion Cincinnati giving the Ramblers an NCAA championship. The 1977-78 season was a memorable one in Alumni Gym as Loyola had a run of victories against top-ranked teams. Early in the year, the Ramblers beat a Minnesota Golden Gophers team led by NBA Hall of Famer Kevin McHale, 70-66. Indiana State then came to Alumni Gym led by a young man from French Lick, Indiana named Larry Bird. In one of the most exciting games in alumni history, the Ramblers went on to beat Larry Bird's Sycamores by a score of 79 to 76 in front of a jam-packed alumni gym crowd. The Ramblers finished the trifecta by beating John Thompson's Georgetown Hoyas 68 to 65 in overtime in alumni gym. 
Well, the atmosphere was great. It was packed. It was very hot. The alumni gym, as you know, is always very hot. Uh, it was crowded. Uh, tickets were, couldn't get any tickets. It was a sellout. The atmosphere was great. Everyone, it was a tremendous atmosphere to be for college. Uh, they were sitting on the sidelines. They were, had their feet on the court. There was no room to move. In basketball, uh, I remember uh, the 1970s and early 80s, uh, you know, there was a transition between when we played in the stadium, our big games in the stadium, and, we, and for a while we brought our big games back here. In 1978, we played Indiana State and Minnesota, in Indiana State with Larry Bird, Minnesota McHale and Georgetown up here. The all-time Rambler team record for points in a game of 133 was set against Loris College in Alumni Gym on November 22nd, 1979. It's extremely emotional because it was the four, four of the best years of my life because what we did, we were always underdogs. And for us to go to the Sweet 16, it was like a dream come true because we fought so hard for three years to make it to the Sweet 16, to get to the NCAA. I mean, all the memories is, just bring chills in my body. When we were here, you gotta realize we were kids that played against each other since like seventh, eighth grade, high school, uh, so we were all competitive kids, the inner city kids, even the kids from the north side. We, in some tournament, we played against each other. So all that uh, builds on you when you go start remembering what you used to do here at Loyola. It's all fun memories here at Loyola, nothing but fun and happy memories. And I only remember losing one game there. It was a true home court advantage to say the least. So I, I always felt good and positive with the um, fans right on top of the court. It really was an advantage to Loyola. The final men's basketball game at Alumni Gym was on February 19, 1996, as the Ramblers hosted crosstown rival UIC. The Ramblers came out on top with an emotional 89-85 victory. Throughout the years, Alumni Gym has hosted many NBA stars, as it was often used as a practice facility for teams that were in town to play the Chicago Bulls. The 1980s Los Angeles Lakers teams of Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar prepared for their games against the Bulls in Alumni Gym, while the 1989 and 1990 championship Detroit Pistons teams, featuring Bill Lambert and Isaiah Thomas, also practiced at the storied facility. Alumni Gym was well known throughout the NBA as a perfect location for basketball while in Chicago. In 1985, a young Chicago Bulls guard by the name of Michael Jordan filmed one of his first Nike Air Jordan commercials in Alumni Gym. Keeping with its tradition of NBA stars, on May 1st of 2002, Alumni Gym hosted 300 NBA scouts and journalists as future NBA star Yao Ming held his official NBA tryout to showcase his skills to interested NBA teams. On June 26th of 2002, the Houston Rockets chose Yao Ming with the first pick of the NBA draft. Throughout its existence, Loyola's alumni gym has provided memorable moments for countless athletes, coaches, students, and fans. And over the years, the building has provided Rambler teams with a tremendous home court advantage. Alumni gym truly is a tradition-rich facility that served the Loyola campus and community well for nearly 90 years. Nobody, nobody wanted to come up here and play us. Uh, we were considered unbeatable up here. It was nice because like 95 to 98 percent of all the fans here were our fans. It's been absolutely amazing. It's um, been a great recruiting tool. It's been a great advantage um, for playing wise. Uh, it's, it's, it's just been so much, history means so much to the guys. They love coming in here every day. They love seeing all, 
and knowing of all the history and the program started in this gym. It was a fun place to play, it really was. And we're going to miss it. We really are. I'm sorry to see it go. But you know, it was loud. It rocked. But like I said, it, 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 you know, it was true couch basketball. I mean, the court's still the same and the baskets are 10 feet high. And I think the biggest thing about it is the relationships that the student athletes over the years have developed and the fondness for the gym. With the close of Alumni Gym and the excitement about the Reimagine campaign and the other things, it really gives us a a sense of hopefully pride in our, in our history and a real uh, uh, really enthusiasm about the future.